Okay, so we are going to look at the last few pages in your notes. So if you will find, I believe it's page 11. We're going to do page 11 over specialization, page 12, 13, and then we'll skip to the very back for page 17. So that is kind of our outline as you listen to this since I am gone today and have a sub. So self-specialization, what we've really been looking at here so far is our basic organelles. And we keep drawing these basic kind of blob-like cells. So we have in our little cartoon here our nucleus, our endoplasmic reticulum, um, he's kind of our workhorse there, the Golgi, the vacuole, the lysosome, um, mitochondria. So I think this is a really fun picture because the mitochondria kind of get to do whatever they want. They have their own DNA, they have their own ribosome, so they're going to do whatever they want. So they don't have to listen to the nucleus. So I thought this was kind of a cute little picture to start us off. That's what we're used to seeing. What we're going to look at today is more specialized cells, especially within uh, the human body. So, I'll make sure this right, cells in the body that are specialized. And you'll have to bear with me, I'm using a smart board and I've never used one before. So all cells are not created equal. So this picture to the right is what you guys have been learning since middle school. So we want to kind of start to change that and add to that diagram. Most of the cells within your body have undergone a process called differentiation. So they've differentiated during development and they have very special jobs. The cells that are responsible for actually getting this process started, and you guys have, may have heard of these um, because they've been controversial for a really long time, these are stem cells. The great thing about these cells is that they are unspecialized within the body. They receive different chemical signals as you are developing within the womb, which will cause them to differentiate into these specialized types of cells that we see in the body. Stem cells are cells that have not differentiated yet. They are specialized cells, or sorry, specialized cells have unique features. And that's what we're going to look at today. Unique features that help them perform a specific task or job for the organism. All right, so let's look at this one here. You have a nice picture in your packet right in the middle of page 11, and it shows you a cell. This stem cell, depending on what's needed, can turn into red blood cells. We'll look at their structure a little bit closely. Uh, at the bottom there, white blood cells, muscle cells, neural cells, pancreatic cells, epithelial cells. This is just kind of an overview of more, some of the more basic specialized structures. So let's look a little bit closer. So our sperm cell, its job is to fertilize an egg. So first of all, notice the shape. It has to be able to swim and it has to be able to do it for a long period of time. So when it has to expend a lot of energy, it makes sense. Oops. It makes, oops, I don't know what's going on. Let's make sure. All right. Okay, sorry about that. I'm still learning how to use this. So, specialized cells. Let's look at the sperm cell. It's really, really interesting because it has to be able to swim. We have lots of mitochondria, lots of mitochondria. We have a big nucleus that's carrying the DNA from your father. And we have specialized structures. So this is actually, the structure here, the acrosome, is actually going to help dissolve the outside of the egg so it can implant itself. And of course, we have a very long flagellum for swimming. So it doesn't look anything like the cell we have been talking about, that blob animal cell. So in our specialized structures, we have a flagella. The cell can move, contains many more mitochondria. And that goes back to the job that it has to do. 
So it needs lots and lots of energy to swim and survive. So that demand for power has to come from extra mitochondria within the specialized cell. So here's another interesting one. Look at the difference between the flagella, or sorry, the sperm cell, and the red blood cell. It has one job, and that is to carry oxygen to your tissues. So this cell kind of breaks all the rules. It has no nucleus. It has no organelles. That's because it is so highly specialized, it has to make room to carry the protein hemoglobin. So within your bone marrow, the red blood cells are created. They're created like any eukaryotic cell, but before they mature, they evacuate their nucleus, they evacuate all the organelles so they can make more room for this hemoglobin protein so you can carry as much oxygen as possible throughout the body. So let's look at a couple of other ones. Here we have a pancreatic cell. Its job is to make large amounts of protein and secrete it. That protein that we're talking about, for the beta cell anyway, This is insulin, but this is coming from a beta cell. They also secrete other things, so they're really, really busy secreting. So if you need to make a lot of proteins, you have to have a ton of ribosomes. If you're making a lot of proteins, you've got to be able to modify them. So here we have increased rough ER. So look, all of these structures in here, here, and here, and all of these kind of get pushed out to the side. Lots and lots of rough ER there. And of course, you got to be able to ship it, depending on where it's going. So we see an increase in Golgi. So we have a lot of increase in that protein transport pathway we've been talking about in class. Then to the right there, you have the white blood cell. They are your immune system. they can get around the body and engulf any kind of foreign invaders that uh, break through the skin. So they contain a lot more lysosomes. That makes sense because if you're going around eating everything, you got to be able to get rid of it. So they have to be able to digest all of the debris or invaders. that it encounters. They aren't attached, and this is something really, really cool that they can do. They can actually move through your tissue, squeeze through any space, and so they can change their shape a little bit. They can squeeze down and get through all those tight spots. This is a process called diapedesis. So diapedesis. So they have to be able to kind of squish themselves down to get to where they need to go. Our last big example here is your skin. So we keep talking about these root words. The root word, the root word, epi. outside. We saw endo is the root word for inside. So epi is outside. Epithelial, this is your lining of your skin, the lining of your mouth, the lining of the inside of your nose. So these are cells that help line the body, move mucus, and protect it. So in between some of these cells, especially in the trachea, the nose, you see tablet cells. Their job is to make that viscous protein mucus. So here we have an example of our specialized epithelial cells, and they are ciliated. 
is a fancy way to say they have lots of cilia that help move all of that mucus around in the airway. So our goblet cells, since they have to create a lot of that protein, we're going to see more ribosomes. Our rough ER and our Golgi. That pathway again. I also wanted to show you this picture. This is actually some supporting cells within the brain. These are called astrocytes. And that's because when they first started discovering these helper cells within the brain, they looked like a starry night. So astro means star. Sight means cell. It's a star cell. And I just think the visuals and things that you can pull up on these astrocytes is pretty cool. They're a pretty neat cell. So I thought I'd throw that in there for you. Again, a far cry from our blob generic animal cell. All right. So now let's look a little bit more in depth at plant cells. They have a couple of extra things here. So the cell wall we see in plants. Oh, that's a bee. Plants and bacteria. So here this provides our support. and some protection to plant cells. Animal cells really need to be more flexible to allow for movement, so we don't need that cell wall. It is usually shown as a line, and it is always outside the cell membrane. So kind of reference that picture to the right there. vacuoles. So in the middle of this picture here, we have a very large vacuole. It stores mostly water. A little bit of food, maybe a little bit of waste. In plant cells, vacuoles are shown as a very large central structure. Plant cell vacuoles are large to help store that water. It also helps maintain the pressure of the cell. In animal cells, you may see some vacuoles for storage. And if you do see those, they're often pretty small. So yes, animal cells do have them, but the size difference is what we're talking about here. So very small structures, more like vesicles that you see floating in the cell. And they usually have at least more than one for their storage purpose. So our diagram below, we have chloroplasts. Plant cells have chloroplasts for photosynthesis. Animal cells do not. Animals have to eat the sugars. We do not make the sugars using light in our own cells. So you have a nice diagram at the end of the page here, looking at the differences and similarities between plant cells and animal cells. So we have our cell membrane, our cytoplasm, our nucleus, and then over to the right, our plant cell chloroplast, a large vacuole, and a cell wall. So there's a good compare and contrast plant and animal cells. Flip to page 17 in your packet. We will use the diagrams here a little bit later for practice. So as you get more and more specialized and more and more complex as a multicellular organism, so here, organisms can be unicellular. So they can have one cell or multicellular. Having multiple cells requires more organization of the cells within the organ system. So we have different levels 
a group of similar cells. Hold on here. A group of similar cells forms what we call a tissue, like skin tissue, muscle tissue. Your tissues will make up your organs. There are four types of tissue within the body, your nervous tissue, your muscle tissue, your epithelial or lining tissue, and connective tissue. Organs help make up organ systems. like your digestive, respiratory, circulatory, or integumentary system. Organ systems then combine to make the organism or the individual. So your four levels of organization are very, very important. You have cells that have a similar function. So think about the beta cells from your pancreas that were making all of the insulin. They come together to form the pancreas. These tissues that are similar make up your organs. Then you have your organ system. So the pancreas is an endocrine body system, which helps make up the organism. So you have some nice pictures here at the bottom on this last page. And here, our smallest and simplest is going to be your cell. They come together to make that tissue. So you can see below we have an example of smooth muscle tissue. This helps make the organ. So in this example, we see excuse me, the stomach. This helps make up the entire organ system, so your digestive system. These work with other systems to help create the organism. And that is the end of the written notes. All right, and since we are done with the notes, we will do one more quiz when I see you. So you took quiz one today. That was our overview from page one through 10. We will do more practice with quiz two. So please, please, please look over your test review or your learning targets, and you can see some of the things that um, will be important for quiz two. Make sure, now that we've covered specialized cells, that you can provide examples, you can identify their functions, and the most important are the structures. What makes them unique? What do they have more of than other cells? We also hit this one, identify structures of plant cells, how they are different from animal cells, and indicate why, so here is where that level three comes in, indicate why plants would need these unique features. And number five, discuss how stem cells Don't forget we need learning target two. So we need to look at those interactions. So we'll see more and more on interactions, how the following one of pairs interact. You guys are going to do a relate worksheet. So you'll be able to practice this specific um, objective. Describe the evidence that suggests uh, mitochondria and chloroplasts originated due to symbiosis, so the endosymbiotic theory. And then this was the last one we added to your concept map. Explain why some organelles are part of the endomembrane system and other cell structures are not. So that is where you need to focus. All of it is fair game on quiz two, of course. Uh, but some of the stuff we just talked about will become more important on quiz two. So please study. We're going to do another lab when I see you. Study quiz two. We're going to review. And then we are going to test by the end of next week. So have an awesome fall break. Make sure to get those worksheets done for the sub and turn everything in before you leave.